you know, it's, it's interesting because you're a parent and when you become a parent, I remember my mom once told me I never, uh, uh, when I had a child is when I finally grew up. And you know, when you do have that child is when you usually straighten your own life out because you don't want that child to see you at your worst behavior. And so maybe there's a weird analogy here where, you know, if, if the AGI is gonna learn from us, maybe we have to really think about how we're treating each other. And you put three really good examples there of, uh, of how we're already doing a pretty poor job to our own humanity. Um, the only thing I worry about is that AI might wake up one morning and say, I'm gonna clean the house. And I look over there and there's a little mold in the corner and it, it just seems to be making everything worse and I'm gonna go clean that up and it could be humanity. I also am reminded of that, is it Siegfried and Roy, those uh, magicians in Vegas who used to raise the white tigers since they were little babies. And they had a great career and a great show until 30 years in, one of them just decided, I think, to just kill one of them one time on stage. So yeah. there was that, there's just, I guess, that randomness and maybe that exponential change and that potential totality that maybe you wouldn't see in a human localized conflict. Well, I mean, tigers are, are predator species. So I, I mean, the, the eventuality of a tiger getting annoyed and biting a human was not that hard to rationally predict, right? So that that's not exactly that's not exactly a great a great leap to forecast that that might happen. I mean the the whole fun of watching Siegfried and Roy with the tigers was because the tigers are, are dangerous and are risk to, risk to eat, eat you at, at at any point, right? I mean that was that was kind of the that was kind of the purpose of the of, of the whole thing. But I I think to a much greater extent than that we are leaping into the great unknown, right? I, I, I mean, creating machines that are much smarter than us. I mean, there is an irreducible uncertainty to this sort of pursuit. And I, I mean, anyone who says otherwise is either lying, idiotic or, or, or insane, right? Because you, I mean, of course you don't know, of course you don't know fully what that sort of system is gonna do. The system, you know, once it becomes 10 times the smartest people, it might discover there are aliens all around us on Earth that we're just too stupid to see, right? I mean, it might, may discover new new laws of physics. There's really no way to tell what what's 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 going to happen, and this is either exciting or frightening or both, depending on your personality and how you how you approach the the the, the unknown, right? So if you say we don't know what's going to happen, I'm not going to argue with you. But if you say you know, the AGI is probably going to want to exterminate us and take power. I mean, I think there's absolutely no reason to assume that. I mean, that's sort of projecting unpleasant bits of human nature onto just very, very different sorts of systems. Like tigers evolve to kill and eat to survive. People, I mean, we're omnivorous. We evolve to kill and eat to survive also. I and mean, we, we, we evolve to beat off our rivals to get mates and so forth. I mean, AIs did not evolve at all in that sense, right? They're being engineered. They they don't have a reptilian and, and mammalian brain that 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 evolved to fight fight to survive and, and destroy the competition. So I mean we the motivations that make people and tigers nasty sometimes don't have to be built built into into an AI, right? Engineered systems are they're different than than evolved systems, and that that makes it unpredictable. But I mean, it, it also means we don't want to bring our baggage from humans and animals into thinking about what what AIs are are are, are going to do. And I, I think a much bigger risk, to my mind, is you know dangerous things people will do to each other following on the economic impact of narrow AI. Because what, so what happens when 90% of human jobs are obsoleted by AI systems? I mean, whether it's 80%, 98%, whatever, when vast majority of jobs are obsoleted by AI systems, small number of jobs that really require some sort of high level strategic insight or fundamental creativity or a very deep 
human connection remain, but say 90% of jobs probably don't need that. And that, 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 then, then what happens, right? So I think what I think what happens in the developed world is after a bunch of ugly political mayhem, we just get some form of, of universal basic income or, or similar mechanism. Look, I think in US, UK, you know, Europe, Japan, whatever, China, you, you're not you're not going to see support for leaving like 80 percent of the population living in cardboard boxes out, out in the street because because they, they can't work. I mean, these are democracies. China China is not a democracy, but it's populist in certain senses. And I, I think I think when AI triggered unemployment becomes that widespread, then you're going to find a popular upswelling for not having everyone live out in the street and for some re redistribution of wealth. And But I think, I think the issue will come in the developing world. Like who, who will give universal basic income to the, the average citizen of the Congo or the Central African Republic. Right? So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, they demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money, despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new 
decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.